Let's make a monogram wreath sign. Keep watching. Okay, so I'm using this sign that I got from Dollar Tree. It's just a, one of those thin wooden pumpkins. And I'm using two different types of ribbon from the Dollar Tree as well. I'm gonna use my sanding block and I'm just going to sand off all the edges and make my surface nice and smooth so that it will take the stain as evenly as possible. And then the letter that I have there is just something that I got from Dirt Cheap and it came out of their Christmas section, I guess. This is my Waverly Antique Wax. I'm going to take it, add a little bit of water, and mix it well. Then I'm going to use a baby wipe, dip it in, squeeze it out, and just begin to wipe this on. I'm gonna go with the grain of the wood. The stain just is so pretty. It makes it look so nice. It really brings out the natural wood tones. And you can see all the little stripes and lines. You could leave it plain if you wanted to, or you could paint it. I'm gonna go around the edges also. so that I don't have any of the original color showing. Want a nice, even color all the way around. So with the Dollar Tree, you can see over there the little stripe on the side. That's just the way it goes with these signs. Sometimes you can get a perfect piece, sometimes you don't. I'm just gonna take my my finger in there, take a little more, dip into it, and just make some curves and contours in my pumpkin. Just pressing down with my finger and dragging it down in the normal shape of a pumpkin. And then before it dries all the way, I'm just going to blend that out a little bit. Gives it a little depth and dimension. All right, I think that'll work well. So now I'm going to let that dry and I'm just going to take some of this lightweight spackling that came from Dollar Tree and I'm gonna fill in that hole in the top of that letter. Originally there was a red ribbon there. Um, it was an ornament for a Christmas tree, I believe. And I don't need it, so I'm just gonna fill it in. I'm gonna flip it over after I try to smooth it out on the top. And because it was such a big space, uh, you won't see this part. I actually took a piece of uh, white tape and put that across the hole in the back so that the spackling wouldn't fall out. Now, here is my bow making tool that I made. And I am just going to use that to make just a rather simple bow here. This ribbon is gorgeous. It came from Dollar Tree. It is really, really pretty very rustic and it is wired ribbon okay so normally you would want to twist it to keep the nice side up but as I got to looking here both sides are pretty on this ribbon both of them are printed and neither one of them is less attractive than the other so you actually don't have to twist it all unless you just want to so I'm going to make four inch loops on my bows And I'm going to pull that end around so I can make sure also that my tails are even. Sorry about my voice. I'm having um, some allergy issues right now. I always do in the fall. So, yeah, I sound kind of uh, weekly today. That would be why. Okay, and so here is some bronzy copper looking polka dot ribbon that also came from Dollar Tree. Same thing here, both sides are pretty. You don't have to twist it at all, but I'm, I'm new to this whole bow maker thing, so I just wanted to make sure I'm doing everything right, representing it correctly to you. I'll also add the video where I made this bow maker 
in the cards and in the description box so you can find it and watch it if you want to make one for yourself. Okay, so I decided to add a third ribbon. This one is a scrap that I had. And you can get this ribbon at Dollar Tree. It's probably where I originally got mine from. The bottom ribbon is five inches, the top one is four, and then, well, the middle one is four and the top one is three, so that it would be stacked. As you can see there, they're stacked and layered so you can see each one. I'm going to go ahead and dovetail each one of these. Just cutting a slit from the outside upward inward. See from the outside. Well, here I gotta go backwards and confuse everybody. Sorry about that. You get the point. You got it? Nothing to it. All right. So I'm going to grab a pipe cleaner. I'm going to lift up just a little on that fabric or on my ribbon and slip this underneath. I'm going to press it down, give it a twist to hold it, and then remove it from the dowels. Okay, so in the center there, I've just made a little tube or a loop, and I'm going to run that pipe cleaner through there and wrap it around the center so that it gives a nice finished look to the bow. So see there, I've taken off the pipe cleaner, still holding everything in place, slipped it through the loop, and I am going to fasten it in the back. I'm not going to trim it down though because the, those ends of the pipe cleaner will be used to wrap around the stem of the pumpkin, and also it will serve as a hanger. For this if you want to use it for a wreath. As always you want to fluff out your bow. That's the benefit of having a wired ribbon. It'll keep everything nicely in place. Just going to put this on here and twist this around to secure it. And then, I don't think you'll see it in the video, but I actually make one more loop in there to use as a hanger. But keep it low so that that orange hanger doesn't stick out above your project. Now at any point, if you decide you wanna use a dot or two of hot glue to put down those, um, the tails of your bows, you can do that to keep them off of your letter. And then I'm going to center my letter. Originally I had put it where I thought the center was by looking at the end of the letter there, the P, but actually the bulk of the letter is on the other side of the loop. So I'm gonna just scoot it over so it is actually in the center of that pumpkin. And then I've taken one of these that you can get these at Dollar Tree. They're these sparkly, glittery, mesh-looking leaves, but they're hard plastic. They come in two packs, and it is one of the colors that's in that bow underneath, so I just went ahead and used that on the top. This is a thankful sign. It was originally just a galvanized-looking color, as you can see here on the back, and I took some Rust-Oleum uh, copper spray paint and just gave that one good coat of spray paint and then let it dry for an hour. Then what I'm going to do here to fix this thankful sign is put on a little bit of the Dollar Tree um, Fix All Adhesive and then a couple of dots of hot glue to hold it in place until that adhesive had set up well. And I'm just going to put that down here. I did have a little bit of the glue poke out around my letters. It's clear so it's not that big of a deal. but. I want to get that off before it dries completely, so I'm just using this little stick that I have and, and cleaning that up a little. It has been one heck of a year, hasn't it? I wanted to use this sign as a represent representation of what I'm thankful for, and that's my family. Um, we have so much to be thankful for. So much loss this year and so much negativity and 
you know, we, we have to be reminded from time to time that there's so much that we do still have to be thankful for and to be grateful for and we find joy in the small things. And so that's, that's what I want to think about when I look at this, this piece. I'm also thankful for all of you who are my viewers and who have helped me to make my channel grow. I have over 100 subscribers now and I'm so excited. I hope that if you're watching this and it's your first time by that you'll subscribe and you'll stick around and be part of our little YouTube family. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon. Bye.